Sister Josephine Garrett. Welcome to the third week of Advent. It's our last full week of Advent, and I hope your journey has been fruitful so far. As we enter into this week, I want to take us to Lamentations chapter 3, verse 26. It says that it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The first time that I encountered the verse, I was on 30-day retreat, and so I was spending 30 days with the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius. And that passage kind of jumped off the page and has stayed with me ever since. And I'm sure it's probably because um, on my best day, I tolerate waiting. Um, it's not something that I see as a gift. And that verse, I think, really challenges us to see waiting as a treasure. So usually my disposition towards waiting is one that is, it's a means to the end. And it's a means for me to get to the treasure that I desire. Um, but in actuality, that verse challenges us to bring a similar experience of treasure to waiting that we do to what we wait for, you know, to seeing what we wait for as a treasure. I think one of the best examples of that is a family that's expecting a baby. You know, so when a family's expecting a baby, they don't have joy only when the baby arrives. From the moment they're aware of the life of this child, there is joy. And so the waiting is a treasure. You know, they put sonogram pictures up on the refrigerator or the wall. All these hands are flocking to this mother's belly to just get a sense of every kick, every motion, every small ordinary activity in the life of this child. And so they are able to treasure the process of waiting in a similar spirit that they will treasure the arrival of this child. So that which they have not touched with their hands um, is in a sense already in their possession. And when I think about it, really our entire life is awaiting. St. Paul says that we groan inwardly as we await our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. St. Augustine has this beautiful Marian image of that waiting. He says that the Blessed Virgin Mary, she still labors today, but no longer with Jesus, with each one of us until we are born into eternity. And so what prevents us from being able to wait joyfully as we anticipate and long for the treasures of our life? You know, one of the things I notice, and you're going to start seeing it, especially in this third week of Advent, we are surrounded with these pristine images of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You know, she's expressionless and you know, there's not a single expression or wrinkle in her face um, from a smile. The stable is pristine, right? We see straw that never saw a piece of dirt a day in its life, uh, pristine statues. And so it can look to us like holiness isn't messy or holiness doesn't reside where mess resides. But in actuality, the life of the Holy Family was quite messy. And the only pristine thing among them was their love for God. And so holiness is messy, and the Holy Family is at home in mess. And the Holy Family doesn't have joy because everything is going well. They don't have hope because all their plans are working out, and they knew peace, even though there was conflict present in their lives. The Holy Family knows joy, hope, and peace because what the nearness of God has done in their lives. And so because God has taken on flesh in their lives, in all circumstances, they can know joy, hope, and peace as they await salvation, right? The redemption of our bodies and this birth of all of us into eternity. You too can know hope, peace, and joy as you wait now and beyond this Advent. I think the first step comes with this realization that what we long for is in a sense already here now. So just as the kicks of a baby in a mother's womb assure her of the presence of a child she has not yet held, so every breath that you take assures each of us of the presence of God, the loving presence of God, and God's activity in your life. If you're using this year's Advent journal, the Rejoice Journal, on Sunday there's that beautiful phrase that Father Toops gives, gave us that God is doing something in us while we await God to do something out there. And that ultimate out there is the redemption of our bodies, our adoption. 
There is a book that I love. I was introduced to it in the novitiate, and it's called The Read of God. And in the early reflections in that book, um, the author talks about emptiness. And she teaches us that the emptiness that we have as children of God, it is not without shape, it is not without form, and it is not a void. The empty space that you experience, it has shape, it has a form, it is not a void, and it has a purpose. So let us pray to God to help us to wait well. Let us pray to God to help us to wait with joy, with confidence, with peace and hope uh, that belongs to us um, and belongs to us as, as the children of God. This is the fruit of the freedom of the children of God. In thinking of how to pray with you during this week, uh, what God placed on our heart was to pray a litany with you. Um, so we together wrote a litany to share with you. Um, it's printed in your Advent journal and we're excited to share it with you. It's called a litany of waiting. Again, you can pray along in your journal if you have the journal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. From the fear of waiting, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of uncertainty, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of failure, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of change, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that your promises will not come true, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that my suffering has no meaning, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that my suffering will not bear fruit, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of my weaknesses, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that your grace will not be sufficient for me, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that your will is not for my good, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that your plans will not fulfill the desires of my heart, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that I wait alone, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that I am waiting because I have done something wrong, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that I will wait forever without resolution, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that I am waiting because you will never respond, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that you have abandoned me in my waiting, deliver me, Jesus. From the taunt of temptation and discouragement that whisper to me while I am waiting, deliver me, Jesus. When it is hard to wait joyfully, Jesus, I will wait with you. When my prayers seem unanswered, Jesus, I will wait with you. When my struggles are overwhelming, Jesus, I will wait with you. In my joys, Jesus, I will wait with you. In my sorrows, Jesus, I will wait with you. In the ordinary events of daily life, Jesus, I will wait with you. In times of celebration, Jesus, I will wait with you. When I feel stuck, Jesus, I will wait with you. When discerning big decisions, Jesus, I will wait with you. When I am tired, Jesus, I will wait with you. When I am sick, Jesus, I will wait with you. When I am uncertain, Jesus, I will wait with you. When no one else will wait with me, Jesus, I will wait with you. Through the pilgrimage of my life, Jesus, I will wait with you. Son of God, Emmanuel, you are my hope. In all my circumstances, help me to wait with you, on you, in you, and through you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you again for journeying with us. Um, again, that litany is in your journal. If you don't have the journal yet, you can still pick that up. And there's other resources available as well at rejoiceprogram.com.